Hi and welcome to this module, Parameter Estimation Using Nonlinear Transformations. Uh, this uh, presentation is part of a group of three presentations where we will, uh, in this, present how to uh, estimate parameters using nonlinear transformations. And in the other two, we'll discuss different ways to perform nonlinear transformations uh, using uh, Taylor series expansions and samples. Uh, the three modules share the same example, so you'll recognize yourself within the three. What is the nonlinear transformation, NLT, of a stochastic variable in this context? Well, the NLT is an approximate method to derive the stochastic properties of a variable, the stochastic variable Z, which is the result of transforming a stochastic variable U with a nonlinear function g. We assume that the mean mu u and the covariance p u is known for the input variable. Often we'll denote uh, the distribution of u uh, as a normal distribution with uh, mu u and p u as mean and covariance, but this is often an approximation. The result uh, uh, z has the mean mu z and the covariance p z. Again, we often denote z to have a Gaussian distribution, but this is an approximation. Unless g is non-linear, uh, uh, this is never the case. Furthermore, for this exercise, we will assume that we have measurements uh, of a parameter that we're interested in x that are uh, a uh, nonlinear uh, function of x, h uh, embedded in process noise e with covariance r. The first approach we'll use is the direct approach using NLT. In this, we assume that h is invertible. That means that we can actually compute x given y minus e. Uh, this is not always the case, but if it's the case, this is a really direct and intuitive way of assuming an estimate of x. So direct approach follows as this. We assume that the nonlinear function that we try to uh, apply to u is actually h inverse. u is uh, y minus e, and since we only have the measurements, we knew the, the mean of it being the measurement that it got, and E just contributes with noise. The output set is then the parameter X, what we're looking for. The method now simply uses one of the nonlinear transformations that we will study in one of the other modules, TT1, TT2, Monte Carlo transformation, or, or the uncentered transform, and obtain an estimate of the parameter given each measurement that we have with mean x hat k and p k as variance. This is the, the simple result if we simply have one measurement f, but if we have several of them, we can combine these estimates using the sensor function formula and we have a combined result. Let's now study this in an example. And this is an example that is used in all of these three modules. Uh, it's a radar example where we measure the distance to the target and the bearing to the target, R and phi respectively. The nice thing here is that the measurement function H that gives us the range and the bearing is invertible given the equations on this slide. Hence, we can easily get an approximation of the, the, the true bear, uh, position of the target given the measurement y. However, what is the distribution of this estimate? And that is what we're going to determine with the direct approach. We will start by looking at the properties of the measurements from this radar uh, setup. I have used the signal and systems toolbox to generate different samples of possible measurements. We have blue dots, uh, resulting from measurements from the left sensor 
and green dots as results of measurements of the right sensor. Uh, you can see the code to do this on the right side of the screen. For each measurement, which I have generated as a, a distance, a range, and the bearing, I have computed the ma uh, matching Cartesian position. Notice that we get a clearly banana-shaped distribution of these measurements in the Cartesian space. Now let's see what happens if we use the uncentered transform to transform the measurements from the range bearing uh, domain to the Cartesian domain. The left side of the picture denotes the measurements in the uh, range bearing domain where they are Gaussian. You see that as two circles or ellipsoids. And after applying the transformation as described above, we get uh, the two uh, slanted um, ellipsoids on the other side. Notice how we miss the banana shape and that we have to make the ellipsoids a bit wider to cover for the, the bent in the distribution. And we also see that when we combine these two measurements, we get a pretty good estimate of the true variable. It's quite tight, so it might be too good. They're not managing to, to cover all the properties of this nonlinear transformation. And this is the code that was used to generate this in the SIX's toolbox. Have a look at it and I would say play around with this yourself. Uh, this, the toolbox gives you the ability to quite easily experience these effects firsthand, which is quite important for you to gain an understanding of the problem. The second estimation method that we use in this uh, module is the indirect approach. It is slightly more involved than the direct approach, but it has the benefit that we do not have to have the ability to invert H in the measurement model. The price we pay for that is that we need to have a prior estimate of the parameter. In this case, we assume that this prior estimate is a Gaussian distribution with x hat naught as mean and px as covariance. So in this case, we form u as the combination of x and the measurement noise. That gives a, a distribution that is uh, x, uh, it has mean x hat naught and zero and a diagonal covariance matrix. We then construct set as the combination of the state and the measurement that we expect to get. That is uh, a function that just returns x first and then h of x and the uh, measurement noise. And then we use our nonlinear transformation to obtain a mean and covariance estimate for this new set. Given this, which has the structure as given on the slide here, we can compute a new estimate x hat k of the mean of the parameter as a linear combination of the previous knowledge of x and uh, uh, the, the difference between the expected and the actual measurement that we got. The covariance is given in a similar way. Those of you have seen, who have seen the column filter before will recognize this as something very similar to the comma filter measurement update. This is no coincidence, it's more or less the same thing, which we will discuss in a later module. Again, let's look at the radar example and see what this means when trying to estimate the parameter x, which is in this case is the position of the target. In this case, I use the TT1 NLT approximation. And we see here, um, 
how you start with the blue prior knowledge, which is uh, fairly non-informative. Of course, we can make this covariance really big if we have no information. We then introduce the measurement from the left sensor, which leaves us with a green, more narrow ellipsoid that describes that we have basically gained information about the distance to the target in the direction of the sensor. And then introducing the last measurements from the right side as well, we get the red estimates in the middle, which is much better. And again, here's the code needed in MATLAB to uh, do this example. It is fairly straightforward and I strongly encourage you to play around with the abilities of the toolbox and MATLAB in general to do these kind of experiments. Let's summarize this module in which we have looked at estimation on parameters using nonlinear transformations of stochastic variables. The first method that we looked at was the direct approach. The direct approach assumes that we can invert the measurement model, in which case x can be written as a function of h, uh, h inverse of the measurement, and we can use nonlinear transformations to approximate the properties of this estimate. The second approach is the indirect approach, in which h does not have to be invertible, but at the same time we then need to have a prior information on x. This method assumes that we can construct in a clever way a set that gives us uh, some parameters that can then be used to in turn compute the uh, expected value x hat k and the variance pk of this estimate. This is described in the textbook in section 3.4, the first part, and 